Norma Vesalis. Now today we will study pterygoid plates, infratemporal surface of greater wing of sphenoid, mandibular fossa, tympanic plate and petrous part of the temporal bone. So, pterygoid plates, medial and lateral pterygoid plates, they lie lateral to the posterior nasal aperture, this is the medial pterygoid plate and this is the lateral pterygoid plate. Medial pterygoid plate, its posterior border is free, at the upper end medial pterygoid plate presents a fossa. This fossa is known as scaphoid fossa. Scaphoid fossa gives origin to tensor valley palatine muscle. Medial to this, the upper border presents a projection. This projection projects into the foramen lacerum. This foramen is the foramen lacerum and this is the projection from the upper end of medial pterygoid plate. This projection overhangs the posterior opening of pterygoid canal in anterior wall of foramen lacerum. So, scaphoid fossa and this projection at the upper end. Lower end of the medial pterygoid plate is projected downwards and laterally in the form of a hemulus. So, this projection is known as pterygoid hemulus. This is the pterygoid hemulus. Pterygoid hemulus is connected to mandible behind the third molar tooth by a pterygomandibular raphae. Importance of pterygoid hemulus is tendon of tensor valley palatini. It uses this pterygoid hemulus as a pulley and it winds round the lateral surface of pterygoid hemulus and turns medially, flattens and forms palatine aponeurosis that is attached to the posterior free border of hard palate. In between this upper end and lower end, this is the free posterior border. Near the middle, free posterior border presents a tubercle. This is known as processus tubris. This elevation is known as processus tubris. This processus tubris supports the medial end of cartilaginous part of auditory tube. The rest of the posterior border below this, this is the lower part of posterior border gives attachment to superior constrictor and pharyngobasilar fascia. So, these are the features of medial pterygoid plate, scaphoid fossa, tubercle at the upper end, pterygoid hemulus at the lower end, processus tubris near the middle of the free border. Lateral pterygoid plate, this is the lateral pterygoid plate, it is broken here. Now, lateral pterygoid plate, it forms medial wall of infratemporal fossa, as so you can understand this is the lateral pterygoid plate. It presents a free border, this is the free border of lateral pterygoid plate. Near the middle, it presents a projection or a spine that is connected to spine of the sphenoid. This is the spine of the sphenoid. So, a projection from in the posterior border of lateral pterygoid plate is connected to the spine of the sphenoid by a pterygospinous ligament. Medial surface of lateral pterygoid plate gives origin to medial pterygoid muscle. Lateral surface of lateral pterygoid plate gives origin to lower head of lateral pterygoid muscle. infratemporal surface of greater wing of sphenoid. So, this surface is roughly pentagonal, presents an anterior margin that forms inferior orbital fissure with the maxilla. This is the anterior margin and the inferior orbital fissure. 
anterolateral margin this is the anterolateral margin anterolateral margin presents a crest that is known as infratemporal crest this is the infratemporal crest lateral margin articulates with squamous part of the temporal bone lateral margin medial margin that is continuous with the root of the lateral pterygoid plate posterior medial margin this is very important this is the posterior medial margin it articulates with the petrous temporal bone so a groove is present this is the groove or a sulcus so sulcus is present between the posterior medial margin of greater wing of sphenoid and petrous temporal bone this groove lodges cartilaginous part of auditory tube and it is known as sulcus tubi so this is sulcus tubi This infratemporal surface gives origin to upper head of lateral pterygoid muscle and it also forms roof of the infratemporal fossa. Posterior medial margin presents important structures. One is this large foramen that is known as foramen oval. Then another foramen rounded that is known as foramen spinosum and a projection that is known as spine of this sphenoid so three features along the posterior medial margin foramen oval foramen spinosum and spine of this sphenoid foramen oval it is in the form of an oval slit it transmits two roots of mandibular nerve motor root and sensory root accessory meningeal artery sometimes lesser petrosal nerve anterior division of middle meningeal vein and emissary vein connecting to the pterygoid venous plexus posterior to foramen oval this rounded foramen is known as foramen spinosum it is known as foramen spinosum because it transmits nervous spinosus that is the meningeal branch of mandibular nerve so this is foramen spinosum it transmits nervous spinosus or meningeal branch of mandibular nerve and middle meningeal artery very important structure middle meningeal artery and nervous spinosus it also transmits posterior division of middle meningeal vein and few emissary vein posteriorly this is the spine of this sphenoid so it is a triangular projection as you can see it projects downwards spine of the sphenoid gives attachment to two muscle tensor veli palatini muscle and tensor tympani muscle tensor veli palatini and tensor tympani muscle two muscles it gives attachment to three ligament one is the pterygospinous ligament other one is the sphenomandibular ligament that extends from spine of the sphenoid to the lingula of the mandible third ligament is the anterior ligament of malleus two muscle three ligament lateral surface of spine of the sphenoid is related to auricular temporal lobe medial surface of spine of sphenoid is related to corda tympani nerve and to the auditory tube cartilaginous part of the auditory tube mandibular fossa and this is the zygomatic arch so at the posterior end zygomatic arch presents a tubercle at this tubercle zygomatic arch divides into a posterior and an anterior root anterior root passes medially forming the anterior boundary of mandibular fossa posterior root passes posteriorly forming the lateral boundary of mandibular fossa anterior root is elevated and is also known as articular tubercle this entire elevated area is known as articular tubercle mandibular fossa so it is a depression this is a depression it consists of anterior articular part that is formed by squamous part of the temporal bone and posterior non articular part that is formed by the tympanic plate this bone is the tympanic plate it is also part of the temporal bone 
so mandibular fossa anterior articular part formed by the squamous temporal bone posterior non articular part formed by the tympanic plate this articular part articulates with the head of the mandible forming the temporomandibular joint whereas this posterior non articular part is separated from the capsule of the temporomandibular joint by a portion of parotid gland now in between this two part this is the fissure so name of the fissure is squamo tympanic fissure between squamous part and tympanic part so this fissure is squamo tympanic fissure on close observation you can see a piece of bone appears in the medial part of squamo tympanic fissure this is the lateral part where there are only two bones squamous and tympanic plate so squamo tympanic fissure in the medial part a small piece of bone now this piece of bone is downturn edge of tegment tympani tegment tympani is part of petrous temporal bone so we can say a part of the petrous temporal bone appears in this squamo tympanic fissure so it divides the squamo tympanic fissure into two parts anterior fissure is petro squamous fissure between the squamous part of the temporal bone and petrous part posterior part is known as petro tympanic fissure between the petrous part of the temporal bone and the tympanic plate so this is the squamo tympanic fissure in the medial part this downturn edge of tegment tympani appears and divides squamo tympanic fissure into anterior petro squamous fissure and posterior petro tympanic fissure medial end of petro tympanic fissure transmits three important structure one is corda tympani now anterior tympanic artery and anterior ligament of malleus this is the tympanic plate it forms posterior part of the mandibular fossa its lateral margin this is the lateral margin forms anterior and inferior antero inferior margin of external acoustic meatus so the lateral end of the tympanic plate forms antero inferior margin of external acoustic meatus it presents a free inferior, inferior border, border that is very sharp inferior border it incorporates with the petrous temporal bone and splits to enclose styloid process this is the styloid process and you can see here this tympanic plate is forming kind of a sheath for the styloid process it surrounds the base of the styloid process you can see so tympanic plate styloid process inferior surface of petrous temporal bone it intervenes between the greater wing of sphenoid and basilar part of the occipital bone apex of the petrous temporal bone is separated from the body of the sphenoid by foramen lacerum this is the foramen lacerum so foramen lacerum is a bony canal that is bounded posteriorly by the apex of the petrous temporal bone medially by basilar part of the occipital bone and anteriorly this part anteriorly it is bounded by body of the sphenoid and adjoining greater wing of the sphenoid body and adjoining greater wing of the sphenoid anteriorly apex of the petrous temporal bone posteriorly and basilar part of the occipital bone medially so this is foramen lacerum foramen lacerum presents anterior wall this anterior wall presents posterior opening of pterygoid canal pterygoid canal transmits pterygoid vessels and nerves and it is overlapped by upper end of the medial pterygoid plate posterior wall of foramen lacerum presents anterior opening of carotid canal this is in the apex apex of the petrous temporal bone presents anterior opening of carotid canal so internal carotid artery surrounded by sympathetic and venous plexus around it enters foramen lacerum through this post uh, through the apex of the petrous temporal bone it passes through the foramen lacerum and it enters middle cranial fossa 
by passing through the upper opening of foramen lissrum. So, this becomes the upper opening of foramen lissrum. Lower opening of foramen lissrum does not transmit any significant structure. It is closed by a plate of cartilage and it is pierced by few emissary vein and few meningeal branches of ascending pharyngeal artery. So, structures enter the foramen lissrum through its posterior wall and anterior wall and internal carotid artery lives through its upper opening, but the lower opening is closed by cartilage. Behind this anterior opening of carotid canal, this is the inferior surface of petrous temporal bone. It gives attachment to levator palatine muscle that elevates the soft palate. Posterior to this, this rounded opening is the posterior opening of carotid canal. Internal carotid artery with the sympathetic and venous plexus around it enters through this lower opening, passes through the petrous part of the temporal bone. It comes out through the apex of the petrous temporal bone where the anterior opening of carotid canal lies, passes through the foramen lessorum and enters middle cranial fossa. So, here we complete the intermediate part of the norma basalis. In the next video, we will see the posterior part of norma basalis. Thank you.